Bible says in Proverbs 24, 18, a just man, a just man, falleth seven times, but rises back up again. Now what makes him just, we in the church would call him wicked. If he falls seven times, one time we can understand, twice maybe, but seven times. Well, what makes him just from the Bible standpoint is that he has enough sense to realize that he can get back up. And not only just get back up, but get back in line. No matter where you've fallen from, no matter what you've done, no matter how many times you've done it, it's not too late. He is so much in love with you that his mercy endures. His mercy is everlasting. It's not too late. No matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, God is still faithful and he's still just, even when we're unfaithful and when we're not just. He's so faithful and just will forgive you of every single solitary sin. No matter how many promises you've made and broken, no matter how many times you've done it over and over again, I'm a living witness. He will forgive you like he forgave me. He's just waiting on you. Just to say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me. I'm not going to make you any more promises. You know my heart. I want to do that. Show me how. Take me. Put me back in line. I love you. Teach me how to walk right. Break every habit. Loose me from every addiction. Come into my life and my heart and live in me and through me. I give you my life for the rest of my life. And just that quickly, you're forgiven. Just that quickly, you're healed. He's your God and you're his child. No, no condemnation. No condemnation. Don't remember the past sins because he's forgotten. Isaiah 43, 25 says, I, even I am he that blots out your transgressions. And for mine own sake, I will not remember your sins. If he's forgotten them, then you forgive and forget too. You're healed, you're saved, you're whole. In Jesus, come on, peace be I fell down, but I got up. I fell down, but I got up. I fell I got up, cause I found out that a saint is just a sinner who fell down, but it didn't stay there. Everyone lift those hands. The word is so clear, it simply states that if we would confess with our mouth, the Lord Jesus, and we believe in our heart. Mm.
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, 
and all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly. Father, Son, and Ghost. Our hymn of the morning will be hymn 283. I am thine, O Lord. Reverend Fulton will lead us in prayer. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. Because of the house of the Lord, our good, I will seek thy good. Those be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. Blessed are they that dwell in the house, Lord, I've loved thy habitation, the place where the honor dwelleth. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh, see. And we sing praises unto the Lord as we lift up. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer, drawn to thee. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I may not reach till I rest in peace with thee. Draw me nearer, nearer, Blessed Lord to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord to thy precious bleeding side with our Father lining him 283. I am thine, O Lord, I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer, drawn to thee. Oh, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, near, oh, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord. By the power of grace divine, let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. Oh, draw me near, near, oh, bless Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, near, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Oh, the pure delight of a single hour that before thy throne I spin. When I kneel in prayer and with thee, my God, I commune as friends with friends. Oh, draw me near, near, oh, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me near, near, oh, blessed Lord, 
to thy precious bleeding side. There are depths of love that I cannot know till I cross the narrow sea. There are heights of joy that I cannot reach till I rest in peace with Thee. Oh, draw me near, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me near, nearer, blessed Lord, to Thy precious bleeding side. Oh, draw me near. Nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where Thou hast died. Draw me near, nearer, blessed Lord, to Thy precious bleeding side. Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Women Fulton will now lead us in prayer. Let us bow our heads, open up our hearts, our souls, and our minds. O oh, Father God, which art in heaven, the only wise and perfect God. Oh, Heavenly Father, I call on you with a bowed down head and a humble heart, asking you, Lord Jesus, to draw us nearer, closer to thee. Heavenly Father, we come recognizing that you're God and you're God Almighty. And beside you, there is none of us. I've heard your call, Lord Jesus. And even though it took me a little while, I said, Lord, hear my. Oh, yes. Use me. So, Lord, I ask you to come into your service. Come as close as we can bear. Use us all, Lord, in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, not only that we stay behind these four walls, but we go out and we teach what thus saith the Lord. Because we're all supposed to be your disciples. Heavenly Father, let everyone know that your love, and there's nothing else like the love of Jesus. So we come thanking you for another opportunity just to say we love you, Lord Jesus. Heavenly Father, we love you. Heavenly Father, from the beginning and the end. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless your service and let it be what you would have it be. Not for any shape, form, or fashion, but just for you, O oh Lord. And Heavenly Father, bless the word that shall come forth. Bless us from the front door to the back door. The Heavenly Father, the way that we came in, we don't go out the same way that we came in. Heavenly Father, that when we go out, Lord Jesus, let our light shine just a little bit brighter. Oh, Heavenly Father, that someone out there in that old sinful world will see the light that glows from us. That they may come running and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And then, Heavenly Father, I just ask you, Lord Jesus, if, you're, if those of us who know you, don't let us sit quietly. Don't be like those who sit by and let the rocks cry out for them, Lord. But let us cry out for you, Jesus. But Heavenly Father, I'm just here to let you know 
that I'm not going to let no rocks cry out for me because I know that I've been blessed every day that you let me lay down and wake me up in the morning. I'm blessed. And so I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for being a God that you are. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done for all of us. We're putting food on our table, shoes on our feet, clothes on our back. Well, Heavenly Father, we have clothes in our closet that all we got to do is push back, pick out something to wear. We don't have to be choicy. And for that, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for the roof that you put over our heads. Bless those who are homeless, Lord Jesus. And bless all of the sick and the shut-in. Oh, Heavenly Father, I just ask you to bless the church as a whole. Heavenly Father, and, and bless those especially who do not know you in the pardons of their sin. Oh, Heavenly Father, if you're listening out there on the airwaves, let something be said or done to bring you running to Jesus and ask the question, what must I do to be saved? Oh, Heavenly Father, this is my prayer. I send it up on the wings of your angels. Yes. Heavenly Father, I ask you to receive it, which in the manner that it was given, from heart to heart and from breast to breast. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Oh, yes. Hear our prayer. And incline and grant Amen. The scripture reading for this Lord's Day morning is found in the Old Testament readings of Job. Job, the 35th chapter, beginning with verse 1 and reading from the NIV translation reads, then Elihu said, do you think this is just? You say I am the right. I am in the right, not God. Yet you ask him, what profit is it to me? And what do I gain by not sinning? I would not, I would like to reply to you and to your friends with you. Look up at the heavens and see, glaze at the clouds so high above you. If you sin, how does that affect him? If your sins are many, what does that do to him? If you are righteous, what do you have to give to him? Or what does he receive from your hand? Your wickedness only affects humans like yourself, and your righteousness only other people. people People cry out under a load of oppression. They plead for relief from the arm of the powerful. But no one says, where is God my maker who gives songs in the night, who teaches us more than he teaches the beast of the earth and makes us wiser than the birds in the sky. He does not answer when people cry out because of the arrogance of the wicked. The word of God for the people of God and the people of God said amen from all that dwells below the skies. That dwells below the sky let thy create just praise arise 
Let thy Redeemer's name be sung through every land by every region. The Decalogue of Bridge and God spake all these words, saying, And the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law near my God to thee nearer to thee even it be a cross that raises me still all my song shall be Nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer, my God, to Thee, nearer, to Thee. Hear what Christ, our Savior, saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thy heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind, and in thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to thy Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is like an amateur be world without end. Amen. Amen. Once again, good morning and welcome to St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church of Columbia, Tennessee. And we welcome each of you who are joining us through virtual worship on this Lord's Day morning, as well as those who are in the sanctuary. It's a good day in the Lord. Amen. It's been cold uh, this week and last week and all this month. Most snow than we've seen in a long time. But God is with us. He superintends the weather. We don't know what the weather will be. The weather will be what the weather will be. But we know a God who's in control, not only of the weather, but of every aspect of our lives. And we just say thank you. Can somebody give God a praise in the house? Can somebody thank him for his goodness and his mercy? Can somebody shout hallelujah anyhow? Because the Lord has brought you from a mighty, mighty, mighty long way. Amen. And we welcome this morning um, the family of Sister Jackie, her son Torian, Sister Dee Dee, little Morgan and Jonathan are in the house this morning. And we're praying that God will continue to comfort, keep you, and strengthen you. Amen. Sister Eloise, it's good to see you in the house. It's been more than two years since you've graced the house on a Sunday morning. Morning. And it's just good to see each of you. Sister Doris, it's good to see you back there and knowing that God is still healing. Amen. You know, Sister Doris is proof positive that God has healing hands. Amen. And we just thank God for sisters that stay by her side and by Sister Elnora's side through all of this period. And to each of you, we just praise God for you and for how God has blessed us richly. And we are always grateful for each of you 
who continues to make today possible. There are others on our healing and deliverance list. We are lifting them up. There were several on the Sunday school call that have lost loved ones and we're praying for them as well and that God will heal and comfort once again and we thank you again for Sister Andrea and Wayne and Brother Richard and Justin and Kevin and our urchins on the doors, our commission and everybody who makes today possible. You know, sometimes we don't know how to praise God. But I'm a witness and a believer that we better praise God for the little things in life. Amen. We better praise God uh, for those things that we tend to take for granted. Uh, we better praise God uh, for how he brought us out uh, with a high hand. We better praise God uh, for his goodness uh, and his mercy. Mercy that saves us and pardons us. Uh, we better give God a shout of hallelujah anyhow I don't know about you but I feel alright this morning he's already here can't you feel his presence amen and just before Andrea comes and leads us in our sermonic selection Briefly at the end of the morning service, after we've said goodbye to those who are worshiping virtually, we will have a brief church conference for the members of the congregation. And you must be a member of the congregation in order to sit through the church conference. I guarantee you, it will not take us but a few minutes. Amen. So if you would just bear with us and I will give you instructions on once we get into the church conference. Amen. Let's give our praise team a hand clap of praise as they come to us with the ministry of music. Members, if you want to join her, go ahead. <laughs>
comes in the morning Troubles, they don't last always For there's a friend named Jesus Who will wipe your tears away somebody come on somebody come on somebody when some of us think about how far we've come in the Lord we can shout hallelujah because our life is now in God's hands amen thank you that's all right y'all my life Aren't you glad man didn't make you? My life is in his hands. 
from Job the 35th chapter, verse 10. But no one says, where is God my maker who gives songs in the night? We're going to talk about bright songs in dark nights. Bright songs in dark nights. Let us pray. Father God, once again we pause and say thank you from whom all blessings flow. Once again, God, we thank you for all you've done, all you are doing, and all you will do. Once again, God, we thank you for how you've brought us, kept us, lifted us, molded us, make us, feels us, fixes us. We just thank you, God, for looking beyond our faults and still providing for us our need. And now, God, we pray your will be done. Satan, we know you're lurking, but we rebuke you right now. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now speak, Lord, speak, Lord, speak, Lord, with all power and authority. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bright songs in dark nights. You know, there are times where we, we all experience dark nights. Dark nights such as a global pandemic now into the third year instead of in folk instead of fighting for survival they're fighting over whether or not to wear a mask or whether or not they should uh, get vaccinated. This past week, there was a trending story of a 31-year-old father of two in Menden, Massachusetts, who was at the top of the list for a heart transplant. But because he refused to get vaccinated, hospital officials had to inform him and his family that he was no longer eligible for the procedure. His family said, this is extremely time sensitive, dark nights, because without a heart, he can't live. The failure of the United States Senate to pass the John R. Lewis Voting Rights Act a couple of weeks ago has left African-American voters across the nation concerned that they won't have the right to vote come this year's midterm elections. Dark nights, the cloud hanging over the United States and Russia as the world's two most powerful nations square off over the threat of war in the Ukraine. Dark nights, uh, violence in our streets, the elderly and the young alike disappearing, voter suppression laws, gerrymandering, even now in the state of Tennessee, bomb threats on the campuses of the nation's HBCUs and crisis hostages at Jewish synagogues um, sickness, grief, pain, sorrow there's darkness all around us yet our subject for today is bright songs in dark nights for this discourse the word bright means cheerful happy, lively Positive, upbeat. Anybody upbeat in the house? Can anybody say you're lively today with all that's going on in the midst of darkness? Can somebody again say hallelujah? Bright songs would therefore refer to happy music or an outlook, outlook upon life that's optimistic and positive regardless of one's situation or circumstance. Anybody going to be optimistic no matter what you're faced with? Dark nights, on the other hand, refers to those dreadful moments when it appears as if the whole world is closing in around you. Anybody ever been there? Dark nights may be those negative things uh, that happens in life, such as a chronic illness or a terminal, a terminal illness. Uh, dark nights uh, may well be those secrets that cause us anguish or depressed moments. Uh, dark nights uh, are those times when we can't sleep and we spend the night tossing and turning. Maybe somebody had to toss and turn uh, a little bit last night. Uh, 
dark nights uh, are those times uh, when we can't eat uh, because of worry and concern over matters uh, that don't have any we don't have any control over in the first place darkness in the scripture is an emblem of sin ignorance and calamity here calamity is particularly referred to and the idea is however that God can give joy or impart consolation in the darkest season of trial. In fact, God gives us songs in the dark of night. How many know that God can give you joy right in the midst of what you're going through? Now as pastor, I am aware that there are those among us who are experiencing some dark nights. Um, there are also others um, who've lived through some dark nights. Um, some are coming out uh, of a long, cold, dark night. Um, and just in case you've never experienced uh, a dark night, well, live uh, a day longer. And I guarantee you, uh, you will. Um, in today's text, um, the question is asked but no one says where is God my maker who gives songs uh, in uh, the night Job uh, is a wonderful old book that walks around our human conditions and weeps with us when we are sad and offers us something for our weeping. It points a finger at us when we are wrong and instructs us on how to get right. It rejoices with us during times of success and reminds us to never forget the source from which our goodness um, come from. Anybody know where your goodness come from? Uh, in here, anybody know um, where your blessings come from? Uh, the book of Job teaches us um, that God will give us bright songs uh, in dark nights. Um, the book of Job deals profoundly and completely with the questions of human life. It answers that three little three letter perplexing and recurring question why job reads like a drama job the word says was blameless upright and he shunned evil he was in awe of god he reverenced god he loved god more than anything in life and by the time today's text takes place job who was once a very wealthy man with acres and acres and acres of land livestock servants to take care of his every need a large influential family had lost all of his wealth all of his servants was dead and all of his sons and daughters were gone and nobody was left but Job's um, wife she was suffering too um, but she was nagging up uh, and all Job could do um, was sit um, on his ash pile uh, with his body covered up uh, with sores uh, and one day Satan came along uh, and Job was reduced to a shell of the man that he once was uh, and he was living in a nightmare Job was barely clinging to life. Anybody ever been there when you seem as if you were barely claiming, claiming to life, but all in the midst of his nightmare. God would not permit Satan to take up Job's life. Understand y'all, no matter how dark the night is, where there is God, there is hope. I said, where well, there is God, there is hope. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And the word said, one day, um, three of Job's closest friends um, came for a visit. And they found Job um, on a bed. Uh, maybe, Brother Wayne, it was nothing but a little pallet uh, on the ground, uh, to be more exact. Um, and Job is covered uh, with festering sores um, as he contemplates um, the ruin uh, of his fortune and the death uh, of his children and his servants. Uh, in addition to his physical and mental suffering, Job 
up uh, as we said is also dealing with a nagging wife uh, once again we can't be angry at Mrs. Job uh, because those were her children too uh, and she too uh, was suffering but she was pressuring Job uh, to just curse God uh, and go ahead uh, and die and Job uh, over in chapter 7 uh, of the book of Job uh, wanted to know why God uh, why I've been a good servant uh, why have you made uh, me your target anybody ever been there where you felt like you were the very target uh, of God this is a reminder y'all that in life bad things do happen uh, to good people sometimes uh, to test uh, our faith uh, and while sitting there suffering Elihu uh, one of Job's three friends uh, accuses Job uh, of committing some grave sin uh, against God uh, and he attempts to make Job admit to his wrongdoing Job uh, although blameless and upright according to his three friends I had to have committed um, some sin uh, to cause the condition that he was in pray with me y'all while accusing Job Elihu one of the three uh, instruct Job uh, to look uh, towards the clouds uh, look towards the heaven and he said to Job uh, if you sin how does it affect God uh, if your sins are many what does that do uh, to God uh, your wickedness is only the effect of, of humans like you uh, people cry out uh, under the load uh, of oppression anybody ever had a heavy load uh, and all you could do uh, was just cry out uh, under the load uh, Lord uh, have mercy uh, on me uh, Lord uh, I'm down here on your word uh, I'm standing up uh, on your promises anybody know uh, what it feels uh, like to be oppressed uh, under a load of oppression and Elihu said folk like you Job uh, plead for relief uh, from the arms of their oppression but no one says uh, where is God uh, my maker who gives songs uh, in the night uh, Elihu uh, without knowing perhaps uh, when he said where is God uh, my maker he too was asking the question why God uh, why Job are you suffering like this what did you do to offend God why is God where is God in all of this nobody looks to the heaven and say where is God my maker who gives you songs in the night and although Elihu Elihu asked such a profound question perhaps he didn't understand that if you keep the faith y'all God will give you a song to sing no matter your troubles God will have you singing joy in your darkest hour perhaps Job's three friends didn't know that the Lord is an ever present helper in the time of trouble perhaps they didn't know that no matter how dark the night God is still a refuge and strength I tell you y'all he'll give you a song in your night now the question why should not be asked only when we are grief stricken we should ask it when things are going well with us why if we do not deserve the bad we most assuredly do not deserve the good and sometimes instead of only asking God why when it's dark we ought to ask why Lord are you so good to me when I ain't always been who I ought to be why God do do you provide for me and keep shelter over my head uh, when sometime uh, I'm low down uh, and dirty why God uh, do you love me anyhow 
no matter how many times I mess up why God do you just look down beyond my faults and still provide for me my need See, some folk only go to God when they're in trouble. But you better learn how to thank God in the good times. Like Job, Elihu, and the other two friends wanted an answer to why. And once his three friends arrive, they just sit there on the floor for seven days staring at Job didn't say a word, but all of a sudden they wanted to know, Job, how did you get in this condition? Job, what did you do? And you know, this is the way some folk think about the suffering and the afflicted when the truth of the matter is uh, we all suffer sometimes uh, the truth of the matter is uh, we don't have to do any great sin uh, in order to see suffering even Jesus suffered uh, several times in his life uh, and from the cross of Calvary Jesus even cried out in agony my God my God uh, why how thou forsaken me Saints and sinners alike suffer. One of Job's um, comforters said, uh, you suffer because you know uh, you've done wrong. And even had Job done wrong, uh, this was not the time uh, to bring it up. You know how some folk are? Come to see you on your sick bed and talk about every negative thing that they ever could think of and some preachers don't show up until you're on your deathbed come in wearing all black and scare death right into you well we ought to be lifting folk up y'all we ought not be trying to put folk down but just lift them up where would we be if Jesus had lifted us up and we can shout hallelujah love lifted me church in response to their nagging and accusations perhaps job was thinking elihu about elihu's words and job said men cry out well the text said men cry out under the load of oppression they plead for relief from the arm of the most powerful but no one says where is god my maker who makes songs in the night job did not criticize them he needed a friend he didn't need the, the constant nagging and the accusations that he had committed a great sin uh, Job needed a shoulder to lean on anybody ever had to lean uh, on a shoulder of somebody Job needed God uh, who gives bright songs uh, in a dark night uh, can anybody in here stand a little bit more of Jesus uh, in your life uh, anybody need a little bit more of Jesus Jesus, uh, maybe you're going through right now uh, and you could use a little bit more of Jesus. Uh, maybe the job is too stressful. Maybe life is too much of a burden. Maybe there's a hardship. Uh, maybe there's grief and sorrow and you need a shoulder to lean on. Well, I tell you, you can lean uh, on the everlasting arms uh, of my Jesus. Uh, nobody like being sick and dealing in darkness. There are nights of sorrow, nights of sickness. You know that cough always get worse at night. Amen, somebody. But oh, if you just hold on a little while longer while you are praying for joy to come in the dreadful times. We need some bright songs in the dark night. Nobody welcomes a night of testing. No Nobody welcomes a time of life uh, that's not pleasant. Nobody welcomes a time when there's sickness uh, and disappointed. And people, no matter life circumstances, God can give you joy. And every now and then we need to feel uh, joy coming uh, in the morning light. Uh, and even in the darkest of night, uh, the psalmist says weeping may endure uh, for a night. Uh, but hallelujah joy 
joy, unspeakable joy comes in the morning light. I tell you, there is a bright side up somewhere. And I fully understand y'all. Just as it happened with Job, things will happen that we don't have no control on. But if you trust God, if you trust God, who is the maker, he will give you songs in the night. And I tell you, just before it was all over in the book of Job, God gave Job a new song to sing. And you know, folks, sometimes when our backs are against the wall, we learn how to call on the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout the name of Jesus? Can somebody lift up the name of Jesus? Can you call on the name of Jesus? And the good news is uh, he will answer you uh, by and by. We learn uh, when everything else seems to be going against us. Uh, when we are swimming against the tides uh, and burdens are pressing us down uh, and our pillows uh, are wet with tears. Uh, we learn uh, that in a world uh, where there is God, uh, even in the midst of night, uh, joy comes uh, in the morning light up. Uh, joy, y'all, uh, to sum it up uh, so far, it's good uh, if, it's, if it's good uh, in joy if it's bad uh, endure it uh, neither will last but in the midst of it all uh, keep the faith uh, trust God uh, he will give you a bright song uh, in the darkness uh, of the night uh, I know uh, the time uh, is growing short uh, before I take my seat uh, let me tell you what God uh, did for Job uh, in his darkest hour Job never cursed God a, a blame God a, for what was going on with him. Joe kept up his faith. Anybody gonna hold on up? to your faith uh, no matter what uh, and because Job uh, kept his faith uh, God uh, Job even shouted sister Tammy though he slay me yet uh, will I trust him uh, even so uh, I will defend my own ways uh, before him uh, he never lost uh, his faith uh, and because he kept his faith uh, God humbled Job uh, rebuked his three friends and God gave Job a new song in the darkness of night. God blessed the latter part of Job's life more than he did the first. He gave Job double for his trouble. Oh, what would you be like if God blessed you with double for your trouble? God gave Job 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 of yoke of oxen, a thousand donkeys, uh, and he gave Job uh, seven more sons uh, and three more daughters, and Job lived a hundred and forty years longer. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. I tell you, God will give you a bright song uh, in the darkness uh, of night, uh, and if you don't believe Job's story, then run over to uh, an old jail cell in Philippi where Paul and Silas had been arrested, beaten, thrown in jail. They hadn't done no wrong and their only crime was talking about Jesus and telling others about the goodness of the Lord and for this they found themselves in a jail cell where the shades of darkness was all around them and they needed some bright songs and the word says somewhere about midnight some strange sounds began to well up in that old jail oh yeah they'd heard 
there groaning and moaning, but they hadn't heard nothing like this. And somebody began to lift up a chorus and a hymn of a psalm. And according to Philippians 16, in the darkest of night, when light was farthest away, they began to sing. We don't know what they sang at midnight, but they sang in that old jail cell. They sang until the handcuffs fell off of them. They sang until the shackles fell off of their ankles. They sang until the jail doors just sprung open. They sang that night in that prison. And Sister Robbie, what did they sing? Maybe they lift up a verse of Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Perhaps they raised up a hymn, a verse from the 27th Psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be afraid? Perhaps they heard Isaiah when they passed through the waters. I will be with thee through the rivers and they won't overflow thee for I am the Lord your God. Oh church they just sang in the midnight hours. They sang until there was no more soreness in the body. Anybody got a song you can sing when you are down to your last dime. Anybody got a song you can sing when you can't see your way out. Well, you may lift up your hands and cry out, what a friend we have in Jesus. Maybe you will sing out, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. Or you may say, Valencia, walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Sing, I love the Lord. He heard my cry and he pitied all of my groans. Lord, as I live, when trouble rise, I will hasten to his throne. So go ahead and y'all just sing, 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 until the power of the Lord comes down. Amen. Amen. And amen. Woo. Hey! Hey! Woo! Come on, Sister Andrea. Woo! Every now and then, you gotta have a song. Woo! can't get enough pay but as for me all I can say on, is thank you Lord for all you've done for me folks with our homes are in the street drug habits some say they just can't be muggers and robbers no one can seem to be safe but you have been my protection every step of the way and thank you lord for all you've done for me hey could have been Oh, just a 
may be somebody here today that needs to give a life to Christ. There may be somebody that needs to rededicate their life. There may be somebody that says, Lord, I'm out here on your word. I'm under all of this burden, and I need a new song down in my soul. I offer you Jesus. I can't promise if you give your life to Jesus that you won't have struggles. I can guarantee you you will, but I know with Jesus you'll make it. Amen, somebody. With Jesus, you can take it, and if you're with us, virtually just call the church up at 931-388-4069 if you're here thank you thank you thank you thank you Lord, for all you've done for me Amen. Amen. We praise God once again from whom all blessings flow. To those of you who have joined us virtually, we're going to say goodbye to you at this time. And we're praying that God will bless you, God will keep you, and God will strengthen you. Now, until we meet again. Amen.